Welcome to Bella's Bargains, where everything is from the Dollar Tree. And why? Because everything at the Dollar Tree is a dollar, people. A dollar. This is Effingham. He, my cow, he goes with me sometimes. Hope you'll stick around and consider subscribing. Last night I had a crazy dream about a chick in a black bikini. Oh, she looked so good, she couldn't be real. So she must have been a magic genie. But then she disappeared around the corner. All I saw were three doors and the top of her bikini. I made it through the first door. There was a party going on. I asked about the chick, but what they said was this. Chick a boom, chick a boom, don't you just love a chick a boom, chick a boom, don't you just love a chick a boom, chick a boom, don't you just love a chick a boom, chick a boom, boom, boom. One more time, do it with me, ready? Chick a boom, chick a boom, don't you just love a chick a boom, chick a boom, don't you just love a chick a boom, chick a boom, don't you just love a chick a boom, chick a boom, boom, boom. Hi guys, welcome to Bells Bargains. My name is Amy. You are gonna be chicka booming all day. I guarantee it. Another one of those fabulous songs that all we know is the chorus that has like three words. Like we don't know all the words. Well, it's about this guy that has a dream. He goes to, yeah, uh, it's crazy, crazy lyrics if you read the whole thing. Anyway, anyway, it's a great chorus. So chicka boom, chicka boom. So the whole reason that song came into my head was because today is shabby chic which is spelled C-H-I-C. -I and it always seems really, I always want to say chick, but it's not chick, it's shabby chic. French, I guess. I don't know. I have no idea why it's pronounced chic. Because I would spell chic differently, like S-H-E-E-K, like a chic. Anyway, I don't know. So anyway, shabby chic, which is spelled C-H-I-C, which I kept saying chick, like it's shabby chick. <laughs> like every time in my head, I was like, doing shabby chick. Well, I'm a shabby chick. There's that. All right, if this is your first time here, guys, welcome, so welcome to you. I hope you'll stick around just long enough. Hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification so you'll know every time I upload. For all my besties, happy Thursday, you guys. Today is themed Thursday, and our theme, of course, is shabby chick. I mean, shabby chic. Well, you'll know. You'll know what I mean. All right, let's go over just a few quick things. I totally forgot my notebook. That's okay, I'm in a hurry. I just got back from the gym. Hemp's the beautiful hairdo. Um... But I went, so there's that. I lost one pound. <laughs> It'll be three more weeks before I lose any more. Um, going camping, so I'm a little behind. I know this is coming up late today. I'm so sorry, you guys. But let me just tell you, shabby chic takes a long time to do. It's very tedious crafting. Um, I cannot see. My, it's probably from the gym, and I didn't clean them after the gym. All right, a few things. If you're new here, this is a Dollar Tree channel. We do everything Dollar Tree, all my supplies, all my crafts. I do food reviews, I do shopping hauls. It's all Dollar Tree, Dollar Tree, Dollar Tree. And why? Because everything at the Dollar Tree is, say it besties, a dollar, people, a dollar. All right, so I'm laughing hysterically um, as I'm watching other hauls because I swear people are starting to say dollar. Like, wait, that's mine. It's a dollar. <laughs> I probably not. I think we just all want to say dollar. It's a dollar, people. A dollar. Holla. All right. Um, so today is theme Thursday. If you want to know anything else about the uploads that I do, all you got to do is, is look in the description box and it'll tell you about the four uploads that I do every week and sometimes five, sometimes six, sometimes seven. It's been a while since I've done seven straight days of Dollar Tree Hauls. I should do that one week and then like not do any crafts that week because it would give me some time. All right. But today we are doing crafts. And um, if you are new to this channel, just remember that on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I do DIYs and upscales, totally easy Tuesday theme Thursday. But here's the thing, if you watch both of those days and you give me a thumbs up and you make a comment and you're a subscriber, you're entered into a drawing to win a $20 gift card. Our winner this week was princess0601cc or something like that. Princess one. Got a $20 gift card. I haven't heard from her yet, so hmm. Anyway, and also, I'm so close to 1,000 subscribers. I think I'm at like 925. When we get to 1,000, I'm giving away a $50 gift card. And all you have to do is make sure that you comment on the video that takes me over the 1,000. So I don't know which one that is. I can't tell you. I'm assuming, I'm hoping it'll be this weekend, but who knows? It may not be till next week. 
But whichever video does that, if you comment on that video, you're entered into the drawing to win the $50 gift card. All right, so today is Shabby Chic. And also, at the end of this video, subscribers challenge, yay. So, I'm so thankful for all of you that did the subscriber challenge. If you don't know what I'm talking about because you're new to the channel, every month I do a subscriber channel, a challenge. Talking me talks. So, last month's subscriber challenge was back to school. And all I said was, the theme is back to school. Create whatever you want. The only rule is it has to be Dollar Tree supplies and only Dollar Tree. And then I put them all in a video on my channel and we show what everybody made. That is at the end of this video. And um, it was so much fun. But it's time to announce what this month's challenge is. So you guys, are you ready? This month it is pumpkin. Wait, somebody told, I don't have my notebook. Mm. I got it. It's Tammy, whatever. She has the cutest emoji on her thing. Tammy, whatever said, why don't you do pumpkins? And I was like, yeah, all right, that'd be easy. No, well, not easy, but I'm just saying it's an easy one for all of us to do. So here's what the challenge is. You have to buy a pumpkin. I don't care which pumpkin it is from the Dollar Tree. Any pumpkin will do. And you create a craft. Now, there's a lot of ways we could go with this, right? Because of course there's Halloween and there's fall. So buy a pumpkin at the Dollar Tree, create it, decorate it, do whatever you want with it. It can be a wreath, it can be a pumpkin, it can be, I, you know, do whatever. And then um, you're going to do the craft and send me photos of it via Facebook Messenger. My Facebook page is linked in the description box. And usually I ask you not to send it until right there at the end because it just gets too confusing to try and go back and find them all. And if you're, if you, if that's really the way I want you to send them to me, it's just so much easier that way. Because then I have to pull them all together and put them in a video and yada, 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 which is great fun and I love to see what you guys create. Okay, so it's pumpkin. So what are you going to do with a pumpkin? Do whatever you want. But it has to be, what does it have to be? All Dollar Tree supplies. That's it. So that's our subscriber challenge for this month. Pumpkin. Because you guys, my little besties are my little pumpkins. You're like cute little pumpkins. All right, do we want to see what I made today? So I did cast, Cats on Tuesday, which was so much fun. But I, my countertop here is still, still filled. That's hard to say. With Shabby Chic stuff, because I just had so much. So I'm probably going to do Shabby Chic on Tuesday again. And it's going to be really easy Shabby Chic. And then I'll probably go into Halloween and fall. All right. Or not. I don't know. That's what I'm guessing right now. I am going camping this weekend, so who knows. So I'm just going to start out in the, I'm just going to do these in the order that I created them. I put all the stuff on the counter and then I, all right, now what do I see? So I knew I wanted to do one of these boxes, like for a long time now. I've had the boxes, wanted to do Shabby Chic. So this is what we created. Oh my God, isn't it stinking cute? So it's a trinket box, okay? And yeah, that's it. But look at the top. Look at the pearls in that. Do you see that? So cute. So shabby chic. Love this box. I'm going to tell you guys a few things. This was a two-ply napkin, and I used the two-ply because I wanted it to be a thicker cover on it and a darker, the green to stay a little bit darker. But I did not take my Mod Podge in the inside of the lid and because that would change it and then it wouldn't go back on the box. We're already adding something because we have this on here, right, on the box. So you just wanna make sure you do not carry that Mod Podge to the inside. You won't be able to put the lid back on your box. Wouldn't this just make the cutest gift box to give somebody a gift in because the box is a gift as well? I love this. I'm keeping all the shabby chic stuff. Apparently that's my style. I really like it. But you know, when I was a kid, my, par my parents were antique collectors, so like I, antiques were my style for a lot, long time. Shabby chic really is very vintage-y, so I think that's probably why I like it so much. All right, so that was the first thing, this cute little box. Don't you love it? Chick -a boom chick -a boom Don't you just love it? Okay, and then after that, what do I do next? Oh, I did this, a shadow box. So this was, they had... Um, there was a series of them. They had like, I don't know, they had words and it said imagine and there was a cactus in the back. But look, so these are the stickers that they have that are the perfume bottles. And I just made this cute little romantic perfumey shadow box for like a bedroom. This is a rub on the rose perfume. Now, what I'm going to tell you about these, you guys, is that this is personal choice on how you build it and what you put in it. 
I was saying in the video when I'm doing my talk over, I say I used a lot of purple and um, yellow. It was like, I don't know, it just seemed to be my colors this week. This one does have some pink in it, but it's all personal choice on what you do. I really worked to try and bring those perfume bottles forward a little bit so that they stood out a little bit more. And I just did that by putting two of them together and then, you know, sort of building them forward a little bit, if you can see that. Anyway, I love this piece going in my bedroom or in my bathroom, maybe on my bathroom wall. Um, super cute, absolutely love it. I hope you guys like it too. And then the next one I did was, hmm. This is so pretty. I can't wait to hang this because this is so incredibly beautiful. It's one of my favorite craft pieces I've done, like in a very long time. Isn't that just to die for? It's a calendar page. Notice how I really got that sh that shiplap look in there. You'll see in the video how I did that. And um, this is rulers. Rulers, you know I love to use those rulers. So the back is all, right? We put it all together with popsicle sticks, those bigger popsicle sticks that they're now selling. I love those. This is so just, I want you guys to see the detail. Like look at the pearls in there. These are really tedious to make. They take a lot of time because you're cutting little pieces and to build this up to go, mm. I, you guys, I know you're loving the stuff today. If I don't get like a gazillion comments on this today, I'm gonna be so upset because I just feel like this is some of my best work today, the shabby chic is. All right, then after that, I was like, all right, I'm gonna take something that everybody does. Dollar Tree sells and everybody does them and we all pretty much do them the same way, although albeit that's cute. I was like, nope, I'm gonna go a different route. So I took a truck and I shabby chic it. But don't you love, like how cute, this should not be like sticking straight up there. It's not in the right spot. Here we go. Like how cute, and I don't like the stick showing. I gotta fix this, sorry guys. The stick should be like behind the greenery. There we go, that's better. How cute is this little truck like planter thing? And he's shabby chic. I did do it on both sides by the way. Um, but I don't know why, like I didn't have to, I even did the inside of it. Like I really, oh, not right there though. I like decoupage this whole thing. It was so much fun. I love it. It's so out of the box. It's, I don't, I haven't seen anybody do this with one of the trucks, but it's a super, super cute piece. I absolutely love it. Do you guys love it? Tell me you love my little truck. And then the last one I did was really, I only did one, two, three, four, I thought I did six today. Am I missing one? One, two, three, four. I guess it was just five. Um, I absolutely, this is what I wanted to do initially when I said I was gonna do shabby chic. And then when I put all the stuff out, I went in a different direction, did the box first, whatever. So this was the last piece I made. And it's really, I, it's like, a, I think of shabby chic is very collagey. It's like you're putting a whole bunch of stuff together. And so that's this piece, which is like this shabby chic collage sort of, it's not a shadow box because there's, well, it's kind of a shadow box. Do you love it? By the way, these are those, do I have them right here? Because I wanted to tell you guys that I used them in a completely different way. Anyway, they're like the, oh, here they are. They're the cutting guys, but I don't, I don't know how to use them. I think you have to have one of those machines, but I loved the shapes of them. So I used them on here. I love it. Tell me you guys love this one too. Ma, I really like the shabby chic and just all the detail because you just put all these things in there and oh, I just think it's so fun. I just love these and all those metal stickers that we've all been buying and doing stuff with. So anyway, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have another um, shabby chic thing on Tuesday because it's still out here. We are going camping. I'm thinking I'll just leave it out. He'll be fine and then I'll recreate when I get home on Monday for Tuesday. So anyway, those are the things that I made. All right, now, one more thing that I gotta show you, and that would be my back to school. So let me show you my back to school. I was like, I was gonna make two of these. I only ended up making one, because I was gonna do one with the plant, one with pencils, but I didn't. So I really wanted to do something where I could use some stuff that I had. So this is a regular pencil holder underneath here, and then these are all the things that we pull off the rulers that are always 
you know, I hang on to them and I'm like, how cute is this? What is sweet? Is my sticker coming up? What is sweet thing to give to a teacher? By the way, I would have just written this on here, but I pulled the sticker off because I thought I was just going to put the sticker on there and then I put it on sign. FYI, you could just write back to school, but it's okay. I think this is so cute, so sweet just to give to a teacher for back to school. And this is using all those peel off ruler things that come off of the, um, the rulers, you know, that I made. And this is, it's this pencil holder. So I can just show you. It's one of these pencil holders. Anyway, super cute. And these little potted plants that they sold there not too long ago. So this is my back to school, you guys. Cause I think back to school, it's like give something to your new teacher, right? All right, there we go. That's it. One, two, three, four. Yeah, that's right. I only made two today. Mm -hmm. Okay. I made three yesterday, two today. I think my lipstick's coming off. That's not good. That's okay. I'm going to go anyway. I'm leaving right now so you guys can watch the rest of the video. For all of you that did the subscriber challenge, thank you so very much. Everybody, if you're still here right now, give me an apple for our subscriber channel. And at the end of the video, please tell me which one of these was your favorite. I really do think that this is my favorite. But I, I'm in love with the truck because it's so different. I just think they're... I, I think they all came out really good to this week. Very tedious though. This These take time because there's so much little, getting the little pieces of greenery and whatnot and putting them in there. But yeah, this is definitely my favorite. Okay guys, tell me which one's your favorite at the end of the video. Everybody have a great day, great week, a great life. Don't forget, subscriber challenge this month. Pumpkin, do whatever you want with a pumpkin from the Dollar Tree, Dollar Tree Supplies. And then I'll give you a date to get me your uh, photos submitted to me by, but we have a whole month, so you'll, you know, at the end of September. All right, guys, enjoy the rest of the video. I really hope you like today's. I really love the Shabby Chic. I think it was incredibly fun. And who wanted Shabby Chic, actually? I gotta shout that out, because somebody specifically asked for Shabby Chic, and it was, um, let's see. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Sorry, because I want to make sure I say, hey, here it is. You got your shabby chic. I did it for you, but I, I can't find it. Oh, uh, Bunyab Princess, another princess. It must be Princess Week. She wanted shabby chic. So you got your shabby chic, princess, the other princess, P princess. Oh, that sounds wrong. Anyway, guys, enjoy. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you later. See you back here tomorrow for Foodie Friday. going to make a shabby chic box and so this is just one of the little round boxes that they sell it's Dollar Tree and I have this really beautiful napkins that I got there and I'm gonna decoupage this box um, so yeah I don't want to do like the postcard on the top and anyway so but I have two Mod Podges that are like getting down to nothing. And so I'm just going to use them all up.
<laughs> rather than opening a new one. I know this one's gloss and this one's matte. I don't think it'll really matter. Um, so I'm going to use up the matte first, which means it's probably going to be topped off with gloss. But I would just like to use them up. So, and then, of course, a paintbrush and some water because that always helps. All right, let's do this. And then I'm after it's Mod Podged and dried, I'm going to embellish it with some things. But I didn't pull all those in because they're all sitting to the side of me. And so it's just going to, it's going to be whatever my creative mind sees at that time. So I don't know exactly what I'm putting on it, but I am going to embellish this box. So the obvious is going to happen here. I'm going to Mod Podge the whole lid. I want you guys to take notice that I use a lot of water. It really helps soak that Mod Podge in. And I this is two-ply, and I left it two-ply so that it would be a thicker covering and darker on that grain. And then I go down the sides of the lid, but not into the lid because that would affect the width of it, and it wouldn't go over the box nice again. And then I just go ahead and wrap that napkin all the way around the box. Notice I'm not too concerned about wrinkles. I like the wrinkles. I think it makes it look older and more shabby chic, actually. And then I just cut off a little bit of excess that I had there. And Mod Podge just down into the bottom, over the bottom, I mean, and then into the inside. Because, of course, it's not going to affect anything putting it inside, just on the lid. And then I just used my sander to sand that off and then we had the scissors and the exacto knife to help me get that as clean as I possibly could then it's all done the top looks great now I'm going to embellish and so these are those burlap trims I put one around I use tacky glue and a little bit of hot glue and then the clamps just to keep it on there until it dried and then moved on to the top and this is just personal preference I just started adding florals all over it, it took this is pretty tedious um, but this is, again, it's personal choice. Like, what do you want to do? How do you want it to look? What colors? I ended up doing a lot of purple and yellow. Apparently, I like purple and yellow because almost all of my projects today are purple and yellow for the shabby sheet. And this is, I just pulled out my box that has all my extra florals in it, used mostly from that. And then one lace bow on top there. I think that looks really good. And I'm trying to make sure that I leave the majority of that postcard showing. I just really like that look. And it's just playing around and putting more in there and just whatever you want. I took larger leaves there, but I like the color of that green, and so put them in there. There's one of my curly cues, you know, I love to add those. And um, the florals, that, some of them that were too big, I would just pinch them. Notice there's a pearl inside the one yellow, two yellow ones there, and there's another pearl I just put in the back. Um, just adding in those shabby chic elements. And then just putting some pearls along around the lid. And this looks so cute. It's like such a great gift box. Okay, so this is like one of those, it's like a shadow box kind of. Um, let's take the sticker off. Ooh, okay. So it comes apart, but then you have to put it like back together, right? So it comes, the back comes off and there's the glass and then this is the front. All right. So I'm going to make like a um, shabby chic sort of um, um, shadow box. I'm going to leave the sides pink. That's totally fine. The shabby chic. This this has um, like silver on it, but I'm gonna, look at that. What, I can just, I can just sand all that silver off and get me some just plain shabby chic white. So I'm gonna do that. And then I have an array of stuff around me to put in here. So I'm just gonna start building my little shabby chic shadow box and see what we come up with, cause it's always a surprise. Well, then I found this little thing of stickers and I thought, oh, how cute to make this like a bedroom piece with um, perfume bottles. And so I think I'm going to go that route with it. And so I pulled out some of the little bottles that, you know, Dollar Tree makes. I don't know if I'll use them in here or not. So right now I'm just going to play with a little bit, see what I come up with. So when you're doing shabby chic, one of the things is it's just, it's like a building process when you're doing these lots of things on you know like this shadow box 
So I pulled out a lot of things. So there's like the rose stickers back there. I was trying to cover up the stuff that was on the pink background. These are the greenery stickers. And I'm just building my base for putting all the other stuff on, like the three-dimensional stuff. Um, and so then I got the perfume stickers. And I wanted to, I was trying to figure out how I could pull them forward, lift them up a little bit. None of the bottles, the regular glass bottles fit, by the way. They were too, the box is too shallow for that. So I just put some of these stickers, I did them back to back, and then, um, like, that's a jeweled sticker. I just cut off one of the sticker tops and put it on there. And then adding these elements that are so shabby chic, like the metal sign that says love and the butterflies and the greenery. And this is just a lot of tedious cutting, laying, gluing, and building this perfume shadow box up. And then once it's all done, I put it all together. And then I took the rub-on that said Rose Perfume, and I thought this was so appropriate, and put it in the corner. And then I had to add something because I saw an empty spot there. But when I did finish and I put it all back together, I did run a bead of glue so it wouldn't pop out. And I was going to put lace on it, ribbon, in the end. I thought it looked so good just like this. I love this piece. is a calendar page from last year's calendar, the Simply Blessed. And I love this piece, Believe in God. I mean, good. Well, both. Um, so I'm going to make this a one of my ruler signs. And so I'm going to use six rulers so that I can try and get the, the crease that's already in there. You know what I mean? On the... Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> I'm going to try and do that and we'll see how it goes and then once they're all done once it's all done I'm gonna have like the one side always has the holes in it which is fine I'm gonna use it to my advantage as I decorate this um, you could also go this way right but I'm gonna do it this way because of the lines the fake like ship lap look to it you'll see and then I'm going to decorate it all up and make it a very shabby, chic sign. And I'm going to use um, Mod Podge to put it onto the rulers. The first thing you have to do when you're doing these ruler signs is get all your rulers out. And I use my square to line them up. Square ruler thing. I don't know what that's called. Do you see guys what I'm doing here? I'm gluing it on the wrong side. And I got there and I'm like, wait, wait, I just glued down my side that was, um, that was flat. I don't know if you noticed that there. So then I had to switch it. Anyway, eventually I got it on the right side. And now I'm trying to like fold this so I can get the printed slats in there. And, um, oh yeah, and I put extra brace on going this way on them. But I'm trying to like groove those in a little bit deeper so when I glue this on it'll do that. Now I cut this page apart and did it in three sections so I could get the slats on the slats. If that makes any sense, you don't have to do that. That was just something I wanted to do. This is a white calendar page so when you're putting it on you can see the background, the other side of the calendar page. I wasn't too concerned because I knew I was piling this eye with stuff. But if that's something that you're worried about, all you have to do is paint your board black and then you won't see the stuff on the other side. Okay, so I got it Mod Podge on there, dried it, and then I sand it so that the, the edges are really clean. And then I start to decorate it and I'm adding in these rub-ons and then I realize, oh, I really need to enhance my lines. So I'm pushing those grooves in, I'm adding shoe polish, See that? Did you see how that just, bam, you see the lines? And then doing some sanding. Now I'm back to my rub arms and I'm just adding leaves going out of the wreath because I'm pulling it in a little bit closer and using up more of the white space. And this becomes my background and my base as I pile stuff on top of this to make it shabby chic. So that's a trick with shabby chic is to fill in your background and don't worry about seeing too much of it. It's really there just in case the background gets seen, if that makes sense. So then I just start with um, one of the nostalgic looking stickers that I put over what was a printed sign, uh, sticker sign on there. 
And then taking this, I don't remember what they call that stuff, but I'm just sort of putting down my base, which would be the wreath part, making sure that I'm going to have some brown that will show when I'm all done. Now it just becomes a building process, and you're building and building and building, cutting greenery, gluing it in, cutting it, gluing it, cutting it, gluing it in, and just balancing as you go around. I tried that white flower. They were too big. Then I got my burlap roses. Although these were big, the color and the texture was so perfect for this. So this is a personal choice on how you take your color scheme here. Again, I ended up going with the purple because my garland thing had the little purple buds on it. And I like that. I think it's very feminine and it matched the sticker that I had chosen to put up there. And the opposite of purple is yellow. So like I said in the last one, I did a lot of purple and yellow on these DIYs today. I don't know why. It was just my mood, I guess. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, so again, it's just continually building and trying to balance as you go around. Just always keeping your eye on it. Now, honestly, I could have stopped right here. Look at this, you guys. It could have stopped. It would have been half and half, and it looked really good. I just decided, no, I was going to keep going. I was going to fill in the whole thing. But just know that if you could, and it would take a lot less time. This takes a long time doing this building and putting all of this greenery on there and making sure that it balances. And it just takes a lot of time. But in the end, it's so incredibly beautiful. I'm keeping all of my pieces that I made today because I'm just in love with them all. Um, and then I just keep going and going and I take a little butterfly, one of those nostalgic butterflies, and add it on there. And keep going, going all the way around. And the final thing that I'm going to have to do is those holes on the side there. I need to cover them up. So the burlap that has the lace. Now notice I folded in half of the burlap so that the lace was my edge. I really loved how that came out. And then I'm still messing with it a little bit. Adding pearls. See where I'm dropping the pearls in the purple flowers there? Looks so good. And then I did some twisties with my garland, my purple beaded garland and threw some of those in there. This is so pretty. I absolutely love how this came out. Hope you guys like it too. I did put a hanger on the back so I could hang it on my wall. Probably going in my bedroom. I hope you guys really like this. I absolutely adore it. I have this truck here, one of the wooden trucks, which um, everybody does really traditional. So I'm going to do it a little bit different. I'm going to make this one shabby chic. So I'm going to decoupage the whole truck with, um, I think, this napkin. And then I'm going to put a sign on the door. And I think I'm going to fill the back with, um, I think, with flowers. We'll wait when I get there and see how it goes. <laughs> This was fun to do this truck in a totally non-traditional way. So these napkins, only one corner of them is printed, but I cut down the sides anyway in case I needed those. Um, and so I'm just going to Mod Podge this whole truck. I love this napkin pattern. By the way, it was two-ply. I did cut it down. Um, I didn't need to... I wanted the ease of the one-ply because it bends around curves so much easier. Just remember that. When you're doing something like this with a lot of intricate things in there, one ply is going to be so much easier to conform to your shape. And so this is like, it's almost like painting when you Mod Podge like this. So I Mod Podge the whole truck and then took one of these little stickers and put it on there, loved it, filled the whole thing with florals, and voila! Don't you love it? Okay, so this is just one of those things that says, bless this mess, and I'm just going to make it a shabby, chic decor piece, just putting all kinds of fun stuff in it, and I'll take this bless this mess, or bless this house off, or bless this nest. <laughs> Can't get it right, can I? And I want to kind of save the background paper because I want to use that. Um, I mean, if there's some spots, like right there, it's going to rip from it. That's okay. I can live with that. But 
And then also, if I can save the bless this nest, I can use it in another video. This, I could take this out. Maybe I should take it out just to, just to get the words off. Anyway, and then after I get the words off, I will start my little decor piece. So of course got the blessed this nest off. I had a couple of terrors in the paper, but that didn't matter. I just sanded them down so they were just gonna put it all back together and started piling my stuff on. Again, you guys, this is personal choice. Like you can do this however you want. Um, for me, shabby chic is a lot of nostalgic stuff. Uh, just like there's the old Singer sewing machine and just however you want. It's kind of like a, a collage of things is how I always see it, you know, keys and all kinds of stuff. So I just had fun going through my stickers and pulling stuff out and just putting it on there however I thought and building it up until I got it to where I wanted it and then embellished the frame some just for fun, added a few little butterflies. These are the die cut things which you're supposed to use and I use them for decor not to die cut anything <laughs> I don't have the machine but I like the look of them um, so I just continued to build and build and build and that I mean that's really all I did on this was just personal choice of where I would place things and how I would build it up once I got like all the stickers and objects I did want to add a little bit of greenery in there because it gives it just a little more depth in what we're building here so lots of little pieces of greenery, which those are tedious to get on everywhere. And again, this is just personal choice. I don't think there's a wrong way to do this. So your color palette is however you want it to be. I love those hydrangea stickers. So that was sort of a, started as a base here for me. Once again, purple. And there's yellow in there. Um, I didn't really do anything pink, which pink is also very shabby chic and blue, I guess. I didn't really do any of those. A lot of purple and, and yellow. So anyway, just finished with my little embellishments, putting everything in there, getting it to where I thought it looked busy enough and collaged enough and that I could say it was done. And the nice thing about this one is that there is no glass. I didn't have to put it back under a piece of glass. It's just hanging out like that. And I love it. For my back to school, I have these two pencil holders and I'm going to redo them. And because I thought, oh my gosh, I have all these rulers that are this, they are on the wood rulers and we peel them off to use the wood in crafts. And I save them, of course, every time. And so I was like, oh, this is perfect. I can use them. You guys know I love to use stuff, so I'm not wasting. Um, so anyway, all I'm going to do, and I have some back to school stickers and I'm just going to have some fun and um, put these like all over this. And then I might put, no, I probably won't, I'll just put these on there. And all over it, and then um, put some back to school stickers on it. And I think it'll look really cute, just for like, and then you would give it to a teacher, so you could put a small plant in one and some new pencils in the other. I think it's gonna look cute. In the end, I only made one of these. I just ran out of time. So all I'm doing is laying these down. I'm measuring with my X-Acto knife. And then I used super glue and hot glue to put them down. And that was just because the super glue would hold. The hot glue was initial. Little holding pattern thing. And I did two sides with the ruler side. And the other two sides were the, I think it's metric or whatever. Then I wrapped a band of the red one around it. Got the back to school sticker. Tried to put it on there that didn't really work, so then I got one of the chalkboard signs and put it on there and then glued that onto the band and put a little um, rope bow on top of it. I tried to do red one with this, that didn't work. Anyway, and then got another sign, put a little sticker in it, or skewer on it, so I could put some signs, stickers on them to finish off our little plant holder for a teacher. That was my back to school. So now let's go take a look and see what you subscribers did. Thank you so much for all of you that were part of this participation um, subscriber challenge. It was so much fun. I love seeing what you guys created. So let's take a look at those now. 
So this isn't technically the challenge, but I wanted to share it. Lori sent this in, and she works at it. She manages a convenience store, and they take donations to buy um, sanitizer and masks for the local schools. To when she sent this to me, they had raised six hundred dollars, which is so cool. And she asked her local Dollar Tree for the containers, which of course they happily gave her. But I just wanted to share because I think this is such a great idea. Thank you so much, Lori, for sharing that with us. All right, so this um, Mary sent pictures of what she did, which is a schedule board. She used foam board, contact paper, dry erase calendar, dry erase to-do list, and weekly paper planner, pocket holder, retractable card holder that she used for the markers. Oh my gosh, and there's tape and stickers and two calendar photos. My gosh, the purple edge, I love this. That's from the rulers, you guys. I use the same thing for mine. Um, anyway, super cool. Love it. It's for her craft room. Great job, Mary. And did I tell you it only cost eight bucks? Love that best of all. All right, this comes just from Christy B. Remember, you guys, she also has her own channel called Crafty Country. Um, I love this. She made this for her eight-year-old's teacher. I think it's third grade, if I remember correctly. But look at this. It's an apple. It's so cute. A little hanger. But she takes it one step further. And when the teacher flips it over, she gets a fall one, too. Isn't that a great? I love this, Christy. Thank you so much for sharing it. It's absolutely adorable. Christy from Crafty Country. All right. This comes to us from Don F. Now, this is not her craft. This is her pre-K construction, under construction zone bulletin board from when she was a teacher. She's a retired teacher. And I thought that was so cute. So the students would come in in hats and vests and do the whole construction thing. Anyway, this is her grandson's backpack that they take when they go on picnics. And this is a picture frame that she made for her grandson and it's Velcro on the picture so that she can switch it out during the year. But one of the things I wanted to say, though, is so cute. These backpacks, she would do them for the kids in pre-K, and she would change the box color, the little Lego box color thing, and that would tell her how they were getting home. I mean, like, you know, one color meant bus, one color meant pickup. Isn't that cute? Great job, Don. Absolutely love it. Thank you so much for sharing, and that's a super cute idea with the backpack, and I love the picture frame. All right, this comes to us from Sharon. And this is so cute. It's a back to school wreath. I love this. So she added some sayings like that the teachers might say. Look at all the crayons. It's so cute. See the little back to school thing that's on the chalkboard? She got that from the manager at Dollar Tree, I think she said, which is so cute. They gave that to her. And she's going to hang this up in late in September because school always started right after Labor Day. Sharon, it's so cute. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing. What a fun thing to hang and remind us of kids going back to school. Okay, now Rita did not send these to me as part of the challenge. She was just sharing what she did for back to school. But it was so cute. I had to throw it on here. She changes her decorations constantly at her house. And I'm always trying to get her to share them on my Facebook page. So cute, Rita. Absolutely love it. I'm glad that the little challenge inspired you to do that. And thank you so much for sharing. As always, your decorations are amazing, Rita. And cute kids, by the way, in the frame. All right, so Wanda did something really clever here. It's one of the Halloween houses, and she turned it into a school, which is so cute. Look at the, the Lego things that she put for the stairs. She said when her elementary and junior high were red brick schools, so that's what inspired her. And I love this. She like put kids at the school, even made a little football field. That's so cute. Kind of reminds me of, you know, like uh, playing dolls and setting up the stuff to play with. Anyway, such a cute idea. And I got to say, when I looked at that house, I thought it looked like a school as well. And then of course the apple, just because that represents back to school so much. Thank you, Wanda, so much for sharing. And that was a really clever idea. Love it. So good. All right, this comes to us from Catherine S. You guys know her as K-Mom. Anyway, this is a um, for her granddaughter who starts kindergarten, and it's she's calling it a mid-century Horton Here's a Who Spectacular Susical Organizer. Don't you love that lavender apple? She took the apple, the normally we would paint it red, and she made it lavender. So cute. She's put her granddaughter's name on it. This side is for notes and whatnot, and the back side with the apple is for pens and pencils and whatnot, but look at the starburst that she created on this. So cute. 
She said the starburst effect was popular when she was a kid and it's now becoming popular again. I love, you know, I love to make things big and outrageous. Great job, Catherine. Thank you so much for sharing.